We're all in this together, and we know in our hearts there are friends, and we're friendly. We're friends, we're friends, we're friends. We are friends. I actually tried showing the high school musical films to the people in Duel Academy, and they said it was a very unrealistic depiction of high school life. Nobody was playing any card games. People weren't separated into a color-based caste system. And at no point did any students go missing due to some strange, unforeseen forces at work, while the staff were content to go, because that's how things work here, apparently. Hey, 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 What's up, guys? Lil Karibo here with yet another Lil Karibo Watches Yu-Gi-Oh! GX for episode 16 of the English dub. That's what dub is short for. Language evolves in such interesting ways. But yeah, thanks for joining me for yet another episode of this show where I watch the English dub of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and I react to it in the form of a... funny video. And if you want to follow along with me as I'm watching at my somewhat consistent pace, uh, you can watch it at Hulu.com, Crunchyroll.com, I believe, has it. YouTube actually posted it recently on the official Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube channel. I think you can watch the English dub there. At least people were telling me that you can, so... I believe everybody who tells me information. Like the people who told me that attending Duel Academy would prepare me for a future in anything other than card game dueling. It doesn't. Came here wanting a woodworking degree. Turns out the closest they have to a class about that is one where they just have you pile a bunch of cards on top of each other in a house of cards sort of situation. It's not a very interesting class. Most of it's just spent being like, oh, it's gonna fall. And because of that, it's not a very rewarding course. Just sort of going, whoa, a lot. So episode 16 is called The Dueling Giant, which from Yugi Moto's perspective is literally anybody that he duels. Cause he's a little guy. He little, little guy. He little guy. He little guy. And the episode starts off at nighttime in the forest where an obelisk blue student is being attacked by an unseen assailant. You know, you'd think the least that the Duel Academy staff would have done is put like a little sign just outside the forest saying, don't go in, please. Or you know, like a fence or a, like a rope or anything, but no, just, just, just can't be bothered. And then we see the guy who attacked this obelisk blue student and it's this massive dude covered in obelisk blue uniforms that presumably he's collected from a number of naked obelisk blue students that are now wandering the campus. Somehow this is still a less over-the-top and busy character design than most modern Yu-Gi-Oh protagonists. Oh, he's got a lot of jackets on, does he? Well, let me know when he's managed to accessorize with about 25 belts up and down his body, because then I'll be impressed. And then the dueling giant takes the card that the obelisk blue student dropped and says, you're lucky that this is the only thing you're losing tonight. Was he gonna kill him? Is there a serial killer giant on this island and nobody told me about it? You'd think that would be in the brochure, at least. Come to Duel Academy, you might get murdered by a big fella. Just saying that would be a pretty prominent feature of the island to forget to mention. Speaking of absolute murder, the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX opening theme. Murdering all the other opening themes out there with its awesomeness. Chilling out with the crew in the schoolyard, trying to avoid being murdered by a giant bloke. The episode picks up with Jaden, Cyrus, and Chumley wandering the school halls. Oh, bless Chumley, he's out of the house. And the three of them overhear a few obelisk blue students talking about the dual giant picking off a guy last night. And Jaden calls out to them and asks what they're talking about. And as soon as they see Jaden, they leg it. They run off. Can you blame them? Chumley says that they were obviously talking about the dual giant, this big guy who's been taking out a bunch of obelisk blues around campus and taking their cards. And then Chumley adds that the scary part is that he only comes out at midnight. I think the scary part is that he is attacking people, Chumley. Don't matter what time of day it is. This guy murdered like a bunch of people. Oh man, that's terrifying. Yeah, but the real scary part is that he did it at midnight. Scary, huh? Is that quite as scary as the murdering? Midnight. Yeah, that's the scary part, Chumley. Cyrus is also familiar with the legend of the big chubby bloke. I have heard about this. He takes their cards too. Yup, he makes them play with an auntie. Yeah, I always had to play with my auntie because I had no friends to play Yu-Gi-Oh with as a kid. Or as an adult. Oh, is that not the kind of auntie they meant? Oh, they meant as like gambling, I get it. 
I'm very lonely. Chumley says if you lose the duel against the duel giant, he takes your best card. Isn't best a relative term? I mean, how do you dis- do you have to have like a big debate about which is the best card after the duel? I Seems like something that could go either way. Cyrus says, isn't that illegal though? What? Really? Taking someone's card after you finish dueling. It was the entire crux of the Battle City tournament. Are you telling me that the very basis for the rules of that massive citywide tournament were just like law violations? Or is this Academy Island law we're talking about? Is Academy Island just its own nation state? What's happening? Chumley says, it sure is, and that's why the dual giant duels in disguise. So he avoids getting arrested by just dressing up in those uniforms. It how many people on the campus could possibly fit that description? It's not the best disguise if all it does is accentuate the massive frame of your body. First Jinzo and now this dueling giant. I feel like nobody in this show knows how to be inconspicuous. Then Crowler comes round the bend and is muttering to himself about how this dual giant situation is right bad for him. And because all of the dual giant's opponents have been obelisk blues, and because they've been using the anti-rule every time they duel, if Chancellor Shepard finds out, Crowler's in big trouble. Crowler then spots Jaden and realizes that he can just as easily pass the buck to this kid and get him in trouble trouble instead. Crowler makes a solid pitch. How would you like to have no homework for the rest of the year? Huh? No homework? <gasps> you and Cyrus both. But Chumley will still have to do all his homework. But I mean, why start now, right? Jaden blindly agrees to the task without asking what it actually is. And Crowler describes it as sort of a field trip. You know, the kind of field trip that involves breaking the law and also potentially being murdered. So, you know, probably a regular field trip at Duel Academy. I love field trips. And I love grilled cheeses, but sometimes it depends on who's serving them. Somebody must have done something really horrible to his grilled cheese for him to be that concerned about who might give it to him. Meow. I served him the grilled cheese after I'd sat on it. Nothing like a good grilled cheese on your butt to make you feel good. Bra. So put grilled cheese on your cat's bottom. They love it. Crowler says that Jaden needs to duel and identify the person who's given out these illegal matches. And Crowler's like, you know the guy, right? And Jaden says, oh yeah, the one who's whipping your entire dorm. And so Crowler leaves. That was a pretty great burn by Jaden. And then Crowler thinks to himself that if he catches Jaden and the duel giant in the act, he can have them both expelled for participating in illegal dueling. You know, Crowler, if you spent half as much time investing yourself in the education of these children as you do trying to get them all expelled, you'd probably be a lot happier. I'm just saying. I mean, I love you, Crowler, but, you know... Think about it. Cyrus and Chumley warn Jaden that Crowler might not have his best interests at heart. I mean, do you even know how to say no? Yes. Oh, man. Wait, play that again. Yes. Well, I'm getting a few posh head vibes from Jaden with that line read. Don't you start, Jaden. We already have one posh head lurking these here premises. Are you gonna be a posh head, Jaden? Yes. That's the wrong answer, I'm afraid. In the duel arena, an obelisk blue is going one-on-one -on -one in a card game with a raw yellow, who's clearly out of his league. Cause he's a little guy and he's not doing very well. And he's a very little guy. He's so little. Okay, so anyone who's watched any number of cartoons knows that this kid is actually the brains behind the Duel Giant and the Duel Giant's helping him and it's these two, they're in cahoots, it's obvious, duh. But for the sake of treating the show with a modicum of respect, let's pretend we didn't figure that out in the first five seconds, okay? Cyrus, Jaden, and Chumley all walk into the Duel Arena and sit down and Cyrus says, Jaden, if we keep taking breaks like this, we're never going to find the duel giant. Come on, Cy, this looks like a good duel. Does it? Does it? There's two shitty monsters on the duel field, and one of the duelists looks like he just wet himself. But no, we've got to watch this. Could be a real barn burner. In that I'd rather watch a barn burning down than watch that duel. We go now to the raw yellow duelist, who is deep in thought. All right, I'll play... Uh... Yeah, Jaden, this looks like an instant classic. Jaden looks over the raw yellow duelist's shoulder at the cards in his hand from like fucking ages away. 
in the crowd and is like, oh, he's got Earthquake, he's gonna be fine. How are you seeing that? The raw yellow duelist, who apparently is called Briar, spends far too long deliberating and the obelisk blue student yells at him to get a move on. Dude, you're attending a card game school. It's not exactly known for its fast pace. I took Latin as a major and I can guarantee you that compared to card game school, that was like being on a fucking roller coaster. Shout out to my homeboy Quintus. The obelisk blue student and all his obelisk blue buddies yell profanities and obscenities at the raw yellow student until he is forced to attack with mad sword beast. You see, that's something Kaiba should try doing when he duels Yugi next. Just start being like, hey Yugi, f you, you suck. What's wrong with you? The whole time. And Yugi would be like, uh, 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 swords are revealing light. I, I don't know what I'm doing now. You've upset me. Works like a treat. Briar loses the card game and Jaden is very despondent as a result, but not nearly as despondent as he's about to be when interrupted by Bastion Misawa, the posh head extreme. Extreme poshness. There's actually a little bit of controversy surrounding Bastion because I just went to a convention where somebody told me they didn't think Bastion was posh. And I was like, have you listened to him? Mm, no, I think you'll find that I'm the most common of common folk. I'm a right proper plebeian, I am. Mmm, gonna go get some cheese and onion crisps from the supermarket, cause I'm not posh. You'll notice that the person didn't dispute whether he was a shithead or not, just the poshness. So yeah, I just wanted to curb that little rumor that was starting to spread that Bastion is not posh. I don't want to have a hashtag poshgate situation on my hands. Mmm, hashtag poshgate. Would it even be poshgate? Do posh people have gates? Would it just be like hashtag posh gilded door? Hashtag posh aquarium. We don't have gates, we just have a massive aquarium in our front yard. To be like, mmm, got fish. No gates, just fish. Anyway, <laughs> Anyway, Bastion appears and the only person that gives a sh** is Cyrus. Everybody else just sort of doesn't react. Chumley, posh people can't see you if you don't acknowledge them. Grilled cheese. Good job, just keep being oblivious like that and we'll be fine. Bastion says that Briar has tremendous skill, but unfortunately he suffers from massive stage fright. And we see Briar fall to his hands and knees, as is apparently the traditional I just lost a card game stance. And the obelisk blue students keep lobbing insults at Briar, who gets this dramatic little flash moment and Jaden feels it. Yeah, Wayne Karibo, I felt it too. There has been an awakening in the force. Bastion asks Cyrus what the crew is up to these days. Oh, you know, chilling out in the schoolyard, looking for trouble. Not too hard though. Jaden then sees Briar walking up to another raw yellow student who fits the dual giant's massive frame. Bastion dismisses the notion that this large raw yellow fellow could be the dual giant. And he says that Beauregard, the big guy, is here to design games, not to play them. Oh hey, there's a game design course at Duel Academy. I'd like to see that. I'm sure it's a much more interesting aspect of the school than the one we're seeing every week. Do you think in their game design course, if you present anything that is isn't a card game, they're like, what the f are you doing? Instant fail. The gang ditches Bastion and gives chase after the two raw yellow students. In the school halls, a bunch of obelisk blue students bump into Beauregard and lay into him verbally. Someone's exceeding this hall's maximum weight limit. Hmm. He's fat! Briar and Beauregard step out of the obelisk blue student's way and let them pass, and then Jaden confronts them. He says that he knows Beauregard is the dual giant, and he doesn't want to wait till midnight. He wants to take him on right now. But both Ra Yellow students feign ignorance about the dual giant. What are you talking about? There's no such thing as the dual giant. Come on, Beauregard. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> What's happening? Is there a gas leak in Duel Academy? What the f is going on? Chumley and Cyrus both try to convince Jaden that there's no way that Beauregard could be the Duel Giant. Even though he fits the exact same physical proportions and has a motivation, he just couldn't be. And then Cyrus and Jaden both reenact the conversation that preceded the invention of the first ever math sum. It doesn't add up. No, it doesn't. Yet. But it will. Later that night, Jaden, Cyrus, and Chumley are lying in wait for the dual giant to show his massive face. Jaden chastises Chumley for talking while they're trying to hide. Look, there's two things I do with my mouth, talk or eat. 
Oh, thank God. So why do you give me a grilled cheese? Ah! Ah! The giant! Jokes on Jaden, that sound was actually Chumley's heart screaming in terror as it flees from the encroaching hordes of his cholesterol. Jaden catches up with the dual giant and challenges him. And winged Karibo appears and talks to Jaden in his magical Karibo language, which is mostly comprised of hmms. And this convinces Jaden to break the law and put winged Karibo up as an ante. Winged Karibo clearly just wants to be out of this relationship. The dual giant accepts these terms and they both get their individual games on. The dual giant starts things off by summoning giant orc in attack mode. And then there's this unnecessary shot zooming in like crazy to giant orc's abs. I summon giant orc in attack mode. Is Vince McMahon directing this episode of Yu-Gi-Oh GX? Does, is that a thing? Jaden spends a good two minutes explaining to the dual giant that he already f***ed up because giant orc's defense is zero and when it attacks it automatically switches to defense mode. And then Jaden takes his turn and all he does is set winged Karibo in defense mode. And that's it. Isn't Jaden supposed to be the character who's like, hey man, we're just playing this game to have fun. But in this situation, he's like, hey man, we're gonna play and have fun, but also you suck. Winged Karibo in defense mode, you suck. The dual giant then takes his turn and destroys winged Karibo with its giant orc's giant bone. Has everything gotta be giant with you, mate? Do you think when he goes home, he gets in his giant car, sleeps in his giant bed and has a giant wank? Then the dual giant summons second goblin in attack mode. A spell card that has the power to switch my orc from defense to offense. <gasps> to offense? What's offensive is his face. Holy sh! Chumley. I mean, we can't all be on the cover of Sexy Koala Man magazine. Jaden Fusion summons Rampart Blaster in defense mode, but is still able to use her special ability to attack the dual giant's life points for half of its attack points. And the resulting explosions blow the disguise right off the dual giant, and it turns out to be Beauregard. Can you imagine how sweaty he must have been under all of those uniforms? Talking about sweat, I'm starting to sound like Harrington Rosewood. But seriously, the overpowering scent of Beauregard's man musk must have been something else when that disguise came off. Jaden is very smug, and Chumley and Cyrus can't believe it. They thought he couldn't duel. How would he get in the fucking school if he couldn't win at least one card game, guys? Come on, this is amateur hour here, man. And then shockingly, Briar appears from behind a rock, and he's got a little Xbox 360 headset on. And Briar asks Jaden how he knew that they were both part of this scheme. And Jaden says that he felt how angry Briar was in the duel arena earlier. And then when he saw Beauregard, it all started coming together. Jaden, you may as well have just replied that it was f***ing obvious, cause it f***ing was. Briar points out that he lost the duel in the duel arena. And Jaden says, well, I heard that you are a really good duelist, but you just suffer from stage fright. Are you gonna credit Bastion for solving this mystery or are you just gonna, ju okay. Which cleared up why the duel giant only came out at night and used a radio transmitter. Wait, when was it established that the dual giant uses a radio transmitter? They never even mentioned that once. Wouldn't that be really obnoxious if in most crime investigation shows, they solved the crime by using evidence that nobody had ever mentioned at any point. Law and order special bullshit unit. Cyrus tells them to pack it in and give back the cards that they stole, but Briar isn't going down without a fight. I won't just go home and be little Briar again. Everyone makes fun of me. They say I'm small, a shrimp. Oh, don't call yourself that. Chumley will eat the shit out of you. Briar flashes back to his deep backstory and explains that being teased caused him to develop stage fright. Then he met Beauregard, who also got teased. So they decided to make a promise that they would get all of their bullies back right where it hurts. Nope, not in the balls in the trading cards. And then we see Briar and Beauregard conspiring to create the dual giant persona. And we'll play with the anti rule. So if they lose, they'll give us their best card. But what if we get caught? You just let me worry about all that. Yeah, Briar must have spent a long time worrying about that because his great plan that he came up with to deal with people who find out their identity is to yell at them and explain everything that they did. Good job worrying about that, Briar. Jaden and Cyrus both realize that that's why Beauregard wore a costume. 
so that it would be really hard to catch them both breaking the rules. Yeah, except for the fact that it was really f***ing easy to catch them. All they had to do was go out in the forest, look for him and go, up oh, there he is. And the disguise wasn't hard to get rid of. A little bit of holographic wind was all it took. Was nobody else's holographic monsters strong enough to take the guy's costume off? It was just Jaden's that could do it. What? Jaden threatens that pretty soon everyone's gonna know their true identity, including Crowler, unless they finish this duel right here, right now. Jaden Yuki there taking the law and card games into his own hands. You're a loose cannon, Yuki. So yeah, the duel continues, except now Briar is staying out in the open and is feeding advice directly to Beauregard. And he tells him to summon the Goblin King in attack mode. And unfortunately, it's just a regular goblin with a crown on and not David Bowie with a massive knob. Jaden is surprised by this as Goblin King has zero attack and Briar explains that for every warrior monster he sends to the graveyard, he can summon a half goblin. Which half, top or bottom? Because I don't know about you, but I like a good goblin bottom. Briar does indeed summon a number of half goblins. And then Briar plays Goblin King's special ability, which again is sadly not to dance magic dance, but is instead to gain a thousand attack for every fiend type monster on the field, which brings it up to 3000 attack and defense and it attacks Rampart Blaster. Jaden then summons Pig me, <laughs> and gives him a gun. Elemental hero Sparkman is apparently the dual monster equivalent of the Punisher with electric powers. And Sparkman's gun changes the battle position of every monster on Briar's side of the field. And then Jaden does a bunch of card game bollocks to summon elemental hero Thunder Giant. Next I play polymerization and combine Clayman and Sparkman to create elemental hero Thunder Giant. And he's a real giant. No, Jaden, he's still a fictional holographic monster. He's not real. Thunder Giant's special ability destroys Giant Orc due to its original attack being zero. And then faster than you can kidnap Jennifer Connolly's little brother, Jaden defuses a bunch of his monsters to destroy the Goblin King and every other monster on Briar's side of the field. Beauregard and Briar, who really should consider setting up a bed and breakfast, because then it would be B&B's b and b are defeated in a card game. Beauregard insists that the heroes only turn him in, as Briar was only an accomplice to what he was doing. And in a genuinely touching moment, Beauregard tells Briar that he's not gonna let them expel him just for teaching him what it's like to have a friend. And then Beauregard adds that Briar has to be the best duelist that he's ever seen. You just saw him lose, just now, to someone else. And then earlier today, he lost again. So you've seen him lose twice in- He's the best duelist you've ever- Okay. But Briar isn't ready to give up on his friend either. What about you? Your dream of being a game designer. Not all dreams come true. Jaden's like, what about my dream of being the star of the most popular Yu-Gi-Oh show in the world? Not all dreams come true. Ah, okay. Jaden says that he's not going to turn either of them in, as he knows what it's like to be made fun of. Really? You don't say. I am shocked. What? No. You? What could people possibly pick up on that would be easy to ridicule? Mystery. Jaden explains the elaborate plan that he had to trap them. I only said I'd turn you in so that you'd come out. You know, duel me in the open and realize that you could. But he didn't come out for you. He came out for the other obelisk blue guy and you just happened to be there. This is stupid. Your plan is stupid, Jaden. You're all stupid. All three of you in this situation, you're all stupid. Chumley looks like a genius right now. Jaden's speech gives Briar a heightened sense of confidence, saying that he did feel okay with dueling in front of other people. Ah yes, only by embracing the criminal within himself was he able to find the confidence to play a children's card game. Brilliant lesson. Jaden tells them both to get out of here before Crowler shows up. And so Briar and Beauregard both leg it into the forest, never to be seen again. Well, actually they get seen the next day, but wouldn't that be funny? Cyrus is left in a state of consternation. Because we let him go, we're gonna have to start doing homework again. Including all the stuff we've missed while looking for this guy. Wait, how long were you looking for this guy that you have that much homework? It felt like one day, maybe. But no, now you have weeks of homework piling up. 
It sounds like you just didn't do your homework for a long time, Cyrus, and you're blaming this situation. I'm telling you, Chumley is the real genius here. The next day, Crowler is looming over Jaden and shrieking at him as Jaden attempts frantically to finish his homework. And although I'm not entirely sure, it looks like Cyrus is also having to do his homework, but Chumley doesn't have anything to do and he's just sat there watching. Are you telling me that Chumley is more caught up with his schoolwork than Jaden and Cyrus are? They must really suck at the whole school thing. And they also suck at making excuses, as Jaden says that the dual giant just sort of left going up a beanstalk. Look man, Crowler is not gonna believe a story as bollocks as that. This is a world that is very grounded in reality. It's not like there's like science experiment monkeys running around kidnapping girls or... or anything. Okay, maybe it's a pretty believable story. Outside in the schoolyard, the Obelisk Blue students are all chilling, not looking for trouble, but celebrating the fact that all their cards just sort of turned up randomly. And nearby we see Briar and Beauregard looking at each other and smiling at a job well done. So I guess the lesson here is that if you are mean to people, you might get your card stolen for a day or two, but then they'll be mysteriously given back to you and you won't have learned anything from the experience. Just a typical morality tale in the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe. And that's the end of the episode. I'm starting to notice a trend in this show where the episode will be about Jaden, Cyrus and Chumley trying to solve mysteries and then there's a 50-50 chance if the mystery ends up just being a bunch of bollocks. For example, the Jinzo episode, it wasn't bollocks. There was a real spirit kidnapping people. But in this episode, it was bollocks. It wasn't a dual giant. It was just a couple of kids uh, trying to get back at bullies. See, so yeah, I don't know. It's kind of fun to see the kids dealing with just episodic mysteries as opposed to like, you know, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters stuff that was always this sprawling, ongoing plot that uh, wrapped itself up in the climax of the season. Whereas in this, it's like a bunch of different stories are happening and uh, who knows how they're going to resolve themselves. That's that's a nice breath of fresh air, but I just don't know. I don't know if I like this one. I don't know. There were some real glaring flaws in the way that this was presented. Like the fact that they tried to throw you off with a red herring with Beauregard being bad at dueling, but I don't think there's any way you could be at Duel Academy and be genuinely bad at dueling, like, you'd have to understand at least the basic idea. And then just bringing up radio transmissions from nowhere, like, nobody had mentioned them. Nobody had said a single thing about radio transmitters. And then they were like, ah, and that explains the radio transmitters. Explains what? What are you on about? I don't know, it just wasn't a great mystery, and it wasn't a great payoff to the mystery. It just felt sort of like treading water. I don't know. It was all right. Not great. Yeah, so, so far, GX season one has been a bit of a mixed bag. Like, I like a lot of the main characters, and I like some of the zanier stuff that happens, some of the really out there stuff. But when it tries to do like a fake out where it's like, ah, you thought it was a crazy thing, but it was just a boring thing. It's not that great. Also, what's with the anti-rule being illegal? Is that legit? Like, illegal illegal? Or is it just against the school rules? Because I feel like that would be something that would happen frequently in a world so proliferated with card games. You would offer up your card as a, as, you know, a, an anti. Like, you would do that pretty often. But no, apparently that is frowned upon. Really? Okay. Did you think that the dual giant was Beauregard the whole time? Or did you think it was somebody else? You idiot. Or are you a part of the hashtag Poshgate conspiracy? Suggesting that Bastion is not really posh. Nonsense. Get out of here with that. And yes, as always, I want to give a whopping dual giant sized shout out to all of our Patreon pledges. Thank you so much for everything that you give. All of your support. Thank you. Without you guys, there really would be no- I wouldn't be able to attend Duel Academy. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to pay off my dual student debts, which are all like holographic trading cards. You gotta pay a lot of your rarest cards. Even though it's illegal, you gotta do it. So thank you for letting me do that. I'll catch you next time, and remember... Not all dreams come true. I'll catch you next time. What about you? Your dream of being a game designer. Not all dreams come true.